Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and we said we're going to dig in a little bit more into the topic of IPR and the various different types of orthodontics. Now we're going to talk about braces. Don't forget our IPR webinar is going to be on May 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can sign up on my website by going to events, webinars. You can see it. It's pretty easy to find. There is a small fee for that class, um, but it covers your supplies, your IPR kit, and your type of don. And you do get 2.5 uh, CEs. So I do use IPR in braces. I talked a little bit more about it in a previous video. We'll definitely be talking about it on the webinar, but sometimes you don't know that you need it until you, that you know that you need it. And here's a nice example of a case where you know you need it. For example, we've got all straight teeth on top, we've got crooked teeth on the bottom, and we have zero overjet. So clearly, if and when we were to manage to get this straight, which obviously this is what they're doing, these mechanics make zero sense, um, I would probably work my way up to a heavy wire. Um, and do an open coil spring to fit this in. But knowing that I ran out of overjet, I would probably first do some IPR all over the place. Now, if you had run the case through Invisalign or your ClinCheck, um, nice little hack, you actually know how much IPR you need, which is always nice on the front end. Otherwise, I'm just guessing, you know, and sometimes I overdo it um, or the midlines get off. So that's the one nice thing about running all your cases through ClinCheck, you know, and then approaching the patient, showing them the ClinCheck, they can choose to do Invisalign or they can choose to do braces. That's how I like to do things. Um, and a lot of people do it that way. And Invisalign is fine with it. I mean, obviously, if, if you're doing this and 90% of your cases are not starting, they might say something. But um, if you're giving it a solid effort and, and showing the patient the options and letting them choose, then it's just an educational tool in orthodontics. So um, that's an example there. What else? What else? You also might need to do it for a Bolton discrepancy. My eye is highly trained on Bolton discrepancies. I can tell you there is one here. Um, obviously, there's one here because we're missing a lateral and this is a peg, you know, and same deal. We've got crowding, a lot of crowding and way more than we have on, on the top. So we're going to have negative overjet if we try to fix all this, right? So there's a, you'd need either IPR, well, I'd do a lower incisor extraction here, but um, yeah, you know, going to need IPR for sure. And if you don't understand what a Bolton discrepancy is, you definitely need to understand that before you even go into orthodontics. So make sure you go into my videos by going to your search bar at the top of your YouTube channel, putting in Street Smile Solutions. From there, you're in my YouTube channel. There's a tiny magnifying glass toward the right. You can put in the word Bolton, B-O-L-T-O-N, and that'll take you to all my Bolton videos. Make sure you understand Bolton and how to find it and how to deal with it. All right. Uh, hoping to see you on our lecture on May 17th. Take care.